Hi, I'm Cesar Murguia, and today we are in the new art museum in Mexico City. Today we're going to talk about the differences between the Mexican and Belgium art. Let's start with Diego Rivera and René McGrath, most important artworks. Hi, my name is Juan Adrián Estrella Bastida. I can see some beautiful huge jokes on flowers. The work was painted by Diego Rivera, approximately in 1943. I could part I can see a sunflower right in the center that by this hue and tonality I can say that is on the oldest among the plum flowers. On the right is a chill wood on the right is a chill wood due to his skin colors and way of dressing must live somewhere in the indigenous people of Mexico. In the bottom I think what appears to be a yellow max and a red bill on the left of a person view because of his short hair and facial features. I can also say that uh, she is the little sister of the boy on the right scenes. She looks smaller but with the same skin and hair tone. How did by the doll that the little girl holds in the left hand. It is possible that the girl is taking her little door apart, possibly because she likes to take what seems somewhat that to because the expressions of the small children are not happy and tones of the world are given by and personality of that little girl of less cues, mimes truths signs her expression when disabling the doll is like hello my name is Nayan Vidorta Cuenca today I present the painting to the lovers for Rina Magri. the painter Rina Magri, who was a brilliant painter and not with the nickname of a weather quiet how will you transform the perceiving reality and show us another way of understanding and perceiving what's around us in 1920 he began a painting in the surrealist style with the old technique he painted in 1928 and called it The Lovers. The painting is in the National Portrait Gallery. At uh, this time, part of the gallery was lent to me for a month expose into the public of another country and to give me more international recognition. In the background, I see part of the, I see the part of the room that could be the place where they are because they could be hidden from the person who knows them. I could be the house of an of one of their friends who discovered them. On the right, I can see a man who could be tall, must have a feeling of loneliness. He may be hidden his feelings. I think he could be, be a handsome man. He could be he, his own artist. On the left, there is a woman who could be beautiful. She could have beautiful eyes. Under the blanket, they may have the same feelings of loneliness. I give me a feeling of surprise and sign designs. The, sweet, the history of painting and because the two people with blankets is because the artist mom called it herself when he was working. And he found her in a rabbit in the night wall that had on her face that with this painting has her face covered. I believe he could have suffered a lot because most of his painting give an nostalgia and sad feeling. He may sad. He may have suffered for a lot and with this painting he is represented. It's a beautiful painting. I wouldn't change any of this because it gives me a great feeling to see it's a great painting. Again, I'm Cesar Murilla Casares and I will talk about the mural Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in Alameda Central by Diego Rivera. In this painting, I can see a shiny and gorgeous day. As the name says, it's like a dream in Mexico City, specifically in the downtown. There are a bunch of color, beautiful trees, the representation of the female death, and the Mexican society is very, very well represented. 
because there's a lot of racial and vestment diversity. The painter, we all know him. As soon as we heard the phrase the muralist Diego Rivera, sounds like a Mexican mark in the history of art. He was one of the biggest artists of the nation, and he still is one of those. An icon for new generations of artists, he painted this, his mural in 1947 with a fresco and encaustic technique. That show how he has a lot of creativity and knowledge. Explain the sections of this mural is kind of hard. There are a lot of important elements, but I will take the most important for me. This mural represents three principal eras of Mexican history, the conquest, the Porfirio dictatorship, and the revolution of 1920. On the top right, I can see the Mexican revolution because there is the most popular character of this event a tall and broad man, Emiliano Zapata, who is riding a horse and holding a weapon. On the bottom right is an army under him and a couple of native women. On the left is the conquest. I can see a well-dressed, tall and white man surrounded by the high class, white people and two poor brown-skinned kids in front of them. And for me, the most important element of this mural is the center. In the center, I can see Diego Rivera as a child, led by the hand of La Catrina, a fancy skeleton which in the other side is holding the hand of the well-dressed gentleman in a black suit and derby hat, who is Posada, the man who created the Catrina character. In the background, I can see a sunny day, which is covered by the colorful trees, a fountain, where them, there must be kids playing around. In the middle, next to Posada, I can see Porfirio Diaz holding the national flag, above of a cloud. A girl with wings is with him. She might be one of his daughters. Under the cloud, there is a fancy white man on crutches, followed by a man who could be his bodyguard. Next to this man, there is a kid in the ground, holding a baby who might be her sibling, and a cute black puppy that must be her pet. Next to this girl, I can see the biggest problem in Mexico, a white policeman who must be of low class, is arguing with a brown native man and his family. He must be pu pushing them out of the high class people. I love the painting because I can say that this mural is the biggest description of the nation. Most of the important events that have marked history accompanied by the vanity of the dead represents how mexicans can laugh about everything even of the economy political and social problems that's why this colorful and irreverent mural is my favorite mexican artwork I am Andre Michael Romero Diaz. I can see a tall man and look around in a cold setting. The painter was René Magritte, and he painted this artwork in 1964. René Magritte was a Belgian surrealist painter. Known for his ingenious and provocative images, he intended with his work to change the preconditioned expression. On the right, I can see a cloudy day, the ocean bounded by a pier behind the tall man. On the left side, I can see the horizon, 
the ocean where I can see a stronger lightning. So I can say that the sun is on the left side behind the gray clouds. In the background, I can see a suspicious and extravagant sunset where it could rain. I can appreciate pastel gray colors which creates a feeling of nostalgia and also a feeling of cold between the plane and the viewer. This resembles some coastline in northern Europe due to the climate and colors. I like it, this painting, because it's a simple and original way to do something unique. The author's way of interpreting emotions is both organic and contemporary. The raw way of presenting your works in such simple but complicated ways at the same time is what makes it simple and special. To understand the joke and intent of this work, you must have a broad criterion in which you know what René wanted to interpret. Point out and demonstrate with his art by leaving us trapped in the complexity it carries.